These are the parts that we're gonna use and upgrade on the new Red Cat Sport. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. So I'm just gonna get this all ready. Um, gonna take off the tires, gonna put the uh, receiver uh, wire, just kinda tuck it away like that. Um, this is an awesome chassis. Awesome set of tires on here. Um, just gonna pull this guy apart and uh, get it started. And if you just look at, at the, the basic stock plastics on this rig, they are beefy. Look, look at the knuckle. The knuckle is just all just webbing going in the front. I mean, I, I, I've really beat on mine. I have the Pro and it has taken all the abuse um, that I can throw at it. Uh, this video, I, I wanted to uh, just basically show everything step by step, what everything that needs to be done. Um, I'm gonna go to a little different view here in a few, and I'm gonna show every little bit. Uh, me and a friend was helping out, DJ Skaggs, thank you very much uh, for the, the assistance in this video. And uh, we just basically tore the whole thing down and got it all to where it's gonna be, you know, ready to, to, to do even more for, you know, a cheaper price. And th this one, this kit retails for $199.99. Um, it's an awesome rig. So for this video, I use the Vanquish tools and all I can say is awesome. They, they fit perfect every time. So most of your solid axle cars is going to have uh, a basic, a real basic um, setup. Like back here, you have some two millimeter uh, screws that you gotta take out. You gotta use uh, either a pliers or a wrench. We have a BPC wrench uh, for this video as well. Um, thanks to BPC for all the help and assistance uh, and, and everything that we do in this hobby, uh, not only and on top of that, you know, we have a, a great platform that the Red Cat started with here. And he also helped design some of the other things too and gave him some ideas and inspiration on, on uh, certain parts of the truck. Um, uh, for this, uh, this part here, the top screw that he's about to take out right now, that's a 2.5. Um, uh, the 2.5 uh, driver on that, again, with the Vanquish, uh, Awesome Vanquish tools, man. This 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 video uh, really made me happy. Whenever I, I got those tools and started using them on this, and they just work flawlessly. Tight fit, um, just as good as a MIP tool, but better because you can actually replace the shank. So here we got the whole axle rear axle out. Uh, it's sitting there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the drive shafts. That uses a 1.5 driver to uh, uh, take out that uh, long pin screw. It has threads on one side and it's a smooth shaft to go the rest of the way through. Great, great idea. Way much better. If you, if you don't know about the, uh, the older uh, set screws that used to come on all the drive shafts, um, some people still do it, but it's a horrible, horrible idea. Um, they come out, get loose, then you lose your power to that wheel and you pretty much have to lock tight everything in. But these grub screws like this that, that you go in that, with the shaft on it, they tighten up great. Um, this right here is a truss. We're taking off the stock truss. We got some BPC trusses that are going to go on here. There's a little bit of drilling and uh, other things involved in making that truss fit. We're going to go through those right here in this video. Um, this. Uh, couple screws coming out 2-0 then you take these 2-0s out that captured on the back from the truss uh, honestly this truss is an awesome stock design but we're going for you know a little bit more flash and uh, upgrades just to show what you can do and uh, again with the BPC uh, upper piece if you like adjustments and stuff you can actually put spacers around the four screws on the bottom that are gonna go on that BPC truss and that's gonna lift it up and that's gonna change your uh, geometry of your links uh, some people love doing that because that pushes down on the front of your car um, there's other ways to achieve that as well with the BPC chassis it has all the adjustments on the chassis then with his other parts it makes it where they're really adjustable as well um, for the, the original SCX 10 
Uh, all the parts we're going to use here are actually made from uh, BPC and for the SCX-10 for the most part. Um, here just pulling off these uh, two millimeter screws. The, the, the basic rule of thumb with this is, is to, you know, just take it all apart. Um, I try and keep all my screws together in one little spot for certain parts. Um, certain certain things like this that I know where they're gonna go and it's pretty point blank and I already know that I'm gonna replace some of these screws as well it doesn't matter to me so just set them aside uh, one thing you are gonna need with this is a couple of different screw sizes um, I, I would suggest just getting the uh, the team K and K uh, red cat uh, gen Se Everest gen 7 uh, screw pack from Team k, k for all the stainless steel hardware and while you're doing this just might as well replace it with stainless there's no reason why not to so these screws right here the interesting thing about the red cat that a lot of people compare this to the axial which of course you know axial has been around for for years you know they, they're doing it they got their new axles out that turn incredibly sharp and you know look super scale and everything like that the main point of the red cat is is that $280 for the pro and $200 for the sport and you can get out crawling having fun it's it, it's dependable truck it, it's a very very strong truck um, again this one is the sport so we're gonna have the plastic pieces in there so on the red cat axles which uh, differ from the axials right there the shaft the bearing is actually held on by a little e-clip on the back of it um, the lockouts go in and the, the screws that go into the, the housing for the lockout, they are super beefy, way beefier than any other on the market as far as a plastic axle goes. Um, this here, I'm about to split the case. Once I split the case, you can see how how inside it's been beefed up and it's been strengthened up. It's, it's a real, I, I mean, I, I still can't believe, again, like I, I can't believe that I'm saying how impressed I am with this Red Cat car. Yes, it is, you know, years later than what, you know, other people have done it. But for the price, you can't beat it. That truss right there is a good truss, but we're going to set it aside and we're going to do the BPC update. So here I'm splitting it open, um, showing you the uh, locker just like you would get in an Axial. Um, look at the, if you look at the case halves and you can see how well it's put in. And if you pay attention to the bottom of it, uh, you can see actually right here how these fit in to with the uh, axle shaft. So you put the axle shafts in there and they're actually a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to see here in a sec to see if, you know, what else will fit. Here's an axial housing. That's a stock SCX-10 rear housing. You can see the definite similarities between them. Again, they are two totally different axles. Um, the, the axial axles do have better clearance, I feel, uh, as far as like the webbing and stuff on the bottom uh, and the sides. But the beefiness of where the lockout's screw in, man, I can't believe it. Got the VP lockouts on that guy. See this? You just pull it out and you can pull out your, uh, your axle shaft, uh, which is kind of nice in the fact that if you do snap one on the trail, which I, I've only seen maybe one or two in my lifetime, um, snap, and you can just pop it out. That's an axial hardened gear, uh, bevel cut. Um, that one is uh, for one of my lightweight rigs. There's uh, very little to no grease in it. The Red Cat gear is greased very, very well. Uh, bearing size are the same size. Um, the gears, man, them gears are nice for an RTR. Very nice. The, I wouldn't say they're like the pop metal gears out of like an axial, but I mean, for the most part, they're, they're just a great gear. Now here is a stock axial gear. You can see the difference between them as far as the, the coloration of the metal. Again, the axial one is used heavily, the Red Cat one is not, but in the same aspect, you know, a, a great gear for an RTR. Um, the shafts are beefier, they're a little thicker. Um, now let's, I guess we're gonna see if uh, this will fit in there and guess what, it fits. <laughs> it fits right in, it drops in, literally meshes perfectly with a stock axial gear. Uh, that's the, the red cat pinion in there and a bone stock like the pot metal SCX-10 uh, gear with uh, uh, locker and everything in there from Axial uh, out of an RTR. It works perfectly, it spins, it meshes great, the Axial housings go together fine, it works. I mean, it is, it is amazing. If you throw the Axial gears in there, 
or axle shafts, I'm sorry. You throw the axle shafts in there, look, it spins perfectly. And the one thing is, is with the Red Cat, is it's set up a little bit differently than the other. So the one thing you can do is if you put the, the Red Cat lockouts back on, it all goes together fine. It's just the housing is a little different and the locker is a little bit different. The Red Cat locker is, for the shafts are a lot thicker. So with this here, this is definitely got a little bit of play in it. Uh, you can shim that out, which is a, something that's not unheard of with a lot of uh, manufacturers out there shimming uh, axle shafts and, and pinions and everything else, but it fits. So if you do want to uh, you know, throw something that you feel, say you, you wanna run, you know, maybe some Vanquish ones in there or something like that, they'll just slide right in as long as you use the axial locker in the rear so far. The, uh, the stock SCX-10, um, great axle housing as well. Um, this one, by, but if, whenever you open it up, you can see in here, you can see the spacing that it has. Um, it, it fits nicely. Uh, the pinion, awesome little pinion. We're gonna pop that out here and uh, gonna do some more investigating of what will fit. There's the pinion. It looks just identical to a, an axial uh, pinion. So I'm gonna try the hardened gear, um, popping the the, uh, the Healy Cut one in from Axial, and, and this is the hardened gear. It, it it the thing is is those screws that I use are stainless. Um, I like to use the stainless ones and let them stick a little out because that way if you do shear them off, you can always unthread them back out. Um, and uh, it, it kind of pops right in. Once it pops in, it's a little tight, but definitely 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 doable um, it does rotate slow because the bolts on the heads of the screws are actually hitting the case in there so that's completely 100% you know my fault okay so this gear just fits a little snug it does fit though And you can see it, it meshes. Um, it doesn't make any kind of grinding, popping, or anything. It meshes flawlessly. It just sticks a little bit because of these stainless screws heads that are sticking out right here on the side. That's all. That right there, you can see. That's how it hits. Pinion out, drop the stock stuff back in. See how well it meshes. Uh, you can see the four holes right there line up, and that's because there's an SCX10 case on the back side, so. Everything lines up between the two. Um, just this webbing right there, that, that doesn't, that doesn't line up, of course. But, I mean, it's it's definitely something that's not that big of a deal. Um, it is going to give you a little more clearance underneath if you're running the SCX-10, but not by much. That little bit, just, the little bit right there, is just not much at all. These bearing pieces on the end, a axial uses uh, little sets in there to stop the bearing from you know sliding back and in and out. Red Cat does not. Red Cat has a C-clip on the axle shaft. And then of course this outside piece here. That's the, that's the only difference between the two. Um, if Now if you use an axial gear set and do a little trimming on the outside piece, that lockout should just drop in. This right here, this bearing cap, definitely a lot more solid. Um, it holds it in there very, very well. Um, locates it properly. Axial's design is, is really good as well. Um, this right here is just going, you know, showing the outline of it. Uh, you can, 
I would I would imagine that with the way that this is designed that you could actually seal this up and make a differential with some uh, different uh, like you put oil on it and have a wet differential instead of grease like most people pack put grease in there you could definitely just put some oil in there So here I'm going to trim so I can do the uh, BPC truss. Clip these guys off here. Going to trim it up and clean it up so that way it looks, you know, professional, of course. <laughs> One thing you want to do is be safe, you know, wear eye gear, um, cut away from yourself, all the fun stuff like that. So I'm going to trim this up here. And get that all cleaned up. Trip this sign. Put these two halves together and you can see everything is all lined up. There's just one part missing, the axial and the prior stuff has. These right here need to be clipped off too. There's this little post that they put in from Red Cat. Um, they're not too tall, but you do need to clip them off so that way it'll sit flat with the other housing. Um, I like to clean everything up again with a uh, with a uh, X-Acto knife. Works very, very well for the plastic pieces. It's like building a model kit, kind of, um, as well as another kit. The, these alterations aren't necessary to drive it. Um, I like to do it just because the BBC products are a little more adjustable, a little more tunable. Um, whenever you want to do any kind of spacing on the axle for the truss, you can do it. It's very easy just to drop a couple spacers, some longer screws in there, and it pushes up your rear uh, truss. Now this guy right here fits nicely. Um, we are, you are gonna need to drill if you wanna run the truss on here um, to make it the strongest it can be. And the truss uses uh, four screws instead of just two like the uh, stock one on the outside. And line up the holes there, drop a couple screws in there. And uh, we're gonna Throw those in. Let you get the screws in. Snug them up a little bit. I, I don't like to go too tight. Um, you will strip out the plastic if you go too tight. So just popping this other screw in trying to get it all mounted up and uh definitely uh get that in there tightened up again i want to thank dj for this whole setup here uh helping me out with all this um made it a lot easier having a, another set of hands this right here needs to be, I throw the walkouts on just so that way it's gonna square everything up. Get everything in order to like where it's gonna be like when it's bolted back in the, the truck. Um, the housings actually are very, uh, very sturdy um, as it is stock. It's here, we gotta just drop a couple drill, drill a couple holes. Um, remember use uh, all your proper safety equipment. Um, there's no right way to hold this other than basically just drilling right at my finger here. So um, <laughs> you, you want to be very careful when doing it. I was extremely careful. Um, it locates it and you just, just takes a little blap of the drill and boom, it's drilled. So it, it's definitely looking proper right now. Dropping the screw in. Just to see how it's gonna fit.
these two screw holes right here clean it out drop the other screw in and she is good this uh this build is uh been a lot of fun and uh it's totally awesome how this all uh, has come together and i i really enjoyed uh doing this uh, one thing i will be doing in the future is uh, my personal red cat going to be doing a lot of these upgrades as well but there it is she's all bolted together just got to take it back apart do the final assembly um it, it definitely feels a lot more sturdier uh, the flexing of the housing and stuff like that is is there, there's no flexing at all um especially with that truss added in so there you see the bearing units like the uh, stock uh red cat uses drop the pinion bearing in with the pinion put the bearing on the outside as well so we have a complete axle again this video is a nice long drawn out video yes um, I'm trying to cut it out down as much as possible but we definitely want to show everyone step by step how you can make these uh, adjustments um, these builds um, modifications to the whole red cat setup there will be more videos in the future um, this is going to be part one of a series. Drop the screws in here. Um, you will need to grab a couple extra screws for that top piece. One thing I recommend getting is the Team k, &K screw hardware set. Um, at the video of this, the recording of this, that set was not available just yet. Um, these holes line up perfectly. I'll drop the other screws in. One thing I was asked the other day is about four wheel steering this. I, I don't see any issue at all doing a four wheel steering setup on this guy. It's definitely doable. Um, here's the axial and the red cat rear right next to each other everything lines up fairly the same there is some obvious differences between each one of the housings um, not knocking red cat not knocking axial just two different companies um, definitely red cat has stepped their game up hugely of course by you know having bpc involved but in addition obviously you know the 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 engineering that has gone through on this rig and the price that you get it at is really really affordable um uh, some other people are, are knocking it because saying oh well, i just get a deadbolt at this price yeah if you want to if you want to the type of person that you want to just go out and buy parts and bolt them on constantly yeah i mean cool that, that that's fine if that's what you want to do you want to make it shiny pretty then that's fine but the thing about this car is is that back before there was all the big manufacturers uh, of the rc world making parts for it you had to make your own stuff you had to make your own adjustments you had to you had to do all this stuff so the car can perform with the right the proper adjustments and that's what we're doing starting to do here this right here, definitely, definitely one thing that I like to show everyone. Whenever you put any kind of screw in plastic, any kind of screw in plastic, if you are any bit of the hesitant that it's going to strip out or not stick, you take a dab of super glue. I like to use these little super glues because, you know, after you use them, you just throw them away. And then you drop your screw right in. And what that does is that helps create threads, helps hold the screw, just a little dab of super glue. It's just, it can make the, the biggest difference in the whole world from sticking to not sticking. Of course, you're threading it in as well, so that's going to hold it as well. But that's just something just for that added security into any plastic. It doesn't matter what kind of car it is. 
doesn't matter what you're doing. Just a little dab of super glue. Do not use Loctite in plastic. Loctite in plastic makes it, it eat the plastic. Again, here I'm using some stainless steel hardware that I got from Team K and K. Um, he does have his kit out now, so again, I, I would definitely order that and pick that up because that is a, an awesome setup to have whenever you're taking apart your car and putting it back together. Have nice stainless steel screws that don't rust up or anything like that. Stainless is a little bit more softer than the steel, but you know, I mean, I. I it's nice to be able to, to have a rust-free truck. Definitely with as much uh, water crawling that I do. Again, add just a little little drop of the gel super glue in there. Pop your final screws in. One last one to take out that I used to hold the truss to start it. And drop your little bit of super glue again this is the gel just a little tiny drop in there just to just to assist it um it's something that's something that i have it has made a huge difference uh we're going into plastic so that last screw is tightened up we got our truss on and everything red cat rear axle is complete this has made a big difference we'll see you on the trail